What's going on YouTube? Today I want to talk about stages and camshafts and why I think they're a bit silly. All right, so for today, we've got three cams on the bench here. And basically, the issue today I want to speak about is why stages one, stages two, stages three is just a silly term to really spec out a camshaft. Now, don't get me wrong. Manufacturers use this method to inform the customer that, hey, this one's mild, this one's medium, this one's radical, okay? Now, I get this question a lot, and the reason I'm telling you this is because of it. When a customer calls me and he's asking me, hey Rick, I've got a stage two cam that uh, I want to put in my stock C6 vet and I want it to work with the stock stall converter. Well, that, that information that he's telling me really does not mean anything to me. Now, the information that you need to know when you're specking out a cam uh, goes far more in depth than just the name of the camshaft. So for instance, right here we've got a cam that was uh, swapped out for a Howard cam. This is actually a stock LS2 camshaft profile. Now, the duration on this is somewhere around 200 intake, 200 exhaust. I don't, I don't know offhand. Now, these lobes are very tame. This is pretty much GM went this way to keep the engine running very smoothly. You know, running with the stall converter spec, with the cylinder heads it had. It's a great running cam. You know, they need to maintain drivability standards. Now, in addition to that cam, right here, I've got a camshaft that came out of my old 408 engine. Now, this camshaft was an off-the-shelf camshaft spec for cathedral port heads. Now, the heads that this engine had on it in that 408 combination were a set of LS3 CNC ported heads. Now, this camshaft was actually ground to function with a cathedral port cylinder head. Now, when I was running it in my setup, I was not getting the full potential of those cubic inches out of it. For this particular engine, I was running about 515 to the wheels. And if you look back at my old videos, you can actually hear that cam loping. Now, midway through that build, after running that for a few years, I ended up swapping it out for a designed LS3 spec cam. Now, this cam made use of the LS3 port design, which is a square port instead of a cathedral, as well as the top end CFM that I was getting out of the cylinder head. So if you're ever looking for a cam, the main point I want to run across today is that all you really have to do is read up on all the specs on your exact setup, whether it's in a Corvette, whether it's in a truck, you know, what cylinder heads are on it, what, are, what is the bore, what is the stroke, what is the intake valve? What is the exhaust valve? What is the intake flow number? What is the exhaust port flow number? Basically, with that information that you have, that will give you everything you need to know when you're specking out a camshaft. So you call comp cams, you let them know all that information, and they'll grind you out a cam based on your taste. So uh, for this 408 cam, this is a radical cam for a stock LS3 cathedral port cylinder head. It works great in that application. Anything else that it's not designed to do, it's gonna, it's gonna lack in performance, which it did. I ended up putting a smaller camshaft in this engine because of the, the slower LS3 port velocity. It actually picked up a lot of horsepower. So with this cam right here, this is a, it's hard really to tell. This is a stock LS2. So the duration basically is how long this lobe goes from left to right, okay? so. When you compare these with a micrometer, you know, you would notice that this one has a wider lobe on it versus a narrower peaky lobe like this LS2 would have from the factory. Now, like I said, this thing ran great in a stock engine, you know, no chop, no anything, no issues, no drivability issues. When you go with more duration, you're going to have those drivability issues, but it's a trade-off. So if you are looking for a camshaft to run in your stock converter C6 VET, my advice to you is to call them up, get a custom grind cam for your exact setup. Now, odds are, you know, a lot of guys are just shopping online and they're just trying to find a camshaft to put in their, their, their project. Basically, if you have a pickup truck that you're working on with all kinds of random things, you don't want an on-the-shelf cam because it's not going to take into account the weight of the vehicle. 
you know whereas if you have a ls swap mustang you don't want to put just an off-the-shelf cam in it because you're three thousand pounds less than a freaking suburban you know so why would you put a suburban style cam in that mustang now that's kind of the extreme end of it you know um maybe if you did an off-the-shelf cam and just put it in there i'm sure the project would run pretty well but you're not maximizing your combination it's all about maximizing your combination if you have your intake valve lift and your exhaust valve lift and you spec them out to where your maximum flow numbers are you're going to actually use the capability of that cylinder head and you're going to gain horsepower because of it now for the duration the port design you know if you get a duration that's set up for a specific port design then you're going to maximize your setup so this part i want to talk to you about cam specs and how to tell a cam from another cam now every manufacturer when you when you get the cam specs or you looking at the cam specs online most of the time they'll read you the advertised duration that is the start of the lobe to the end of the lobe and how long in degrees this rotates before it opens and it fully closes so basically you cannot go off of advertised duration because every manufacturer rates them at different settings so some manufacturers rate it at six thousandths of valve lift where others go from four thousandths worth of valve lift so that is going to determine how far on the opposite side up or down it's actually reading now the golden standard is actually to measure your cam specs at fifty thousandths and then that kind of gives you a more um, exact term when you're looking at cam to cam selection so for this particular cam i don't recall i think this was a 248 intake and a 254 exhaust so these these lobes are very fat and round okay now if you were to measure it out with this stock LS2 cam these are more peaky you know these are designed to open a valve and close it as soon as possible without much duration now both of these are set up for cathedral ports and both of these will perform different in your specific application so I just wanted to make sure you guys know to read your cams at 50 thousandths and that is pretty much your cam specs so if you're calling me and you're asking me, will this cam work with a stock stall converter, you read those cam specs to me and you tell me what setup you're actually running and I can actually inform you. So this guy who actually bought the Howard cam, he actually read me the specs at 50 thousandths and I was able to determine that his cam that he was actually picking was like really pushing it. It was really on the border. We actually called Howard cams and they suggested with a stall converter, you, you really should have one, but if you don't, he said you can probably just advance the cam and that will bring the power band down a little bit lower and make it a little bit more tamer down low and that might actually do the trick but I can tell you the customer wanted to install it straight up and now what happened was this cam was more radical than it should have been for a stock stall converter so basically when the, when the whole project was done the car would want to push through the brakes at a red light you can put up with that if you're informed and you know that that's going to happen so you know if i were to recall the specs i think he had like a 225 228 cam in that which is pretty much pushing it on the border these tend to tend to stay below 225 on a stock stall converter so keep that in mind as well so if he were to have called up comp cams and had him make a custom grind that would work with the stock stall converter they would gladly custom grind him a cam for 400 bucks, just the same cost as all the off-the-shelf cams cost, and he would actually have been better off. He would have been making more power, and he would have not had that issue with it pushing through the brakes. Now, had he wanted to change the stall converter out at a later time, and he wanted to put different cylinder heads on it, they could have accommodated him with that as well with a custom spec cam. So. That's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. You know, when you're talking about stages, it's really just an opinion. You know, I could say that this radical cam is a stage one cam. You know, if I had if I gave them this custom grind cam specs, you know, I could sell it as whatever name that I want. For instance, with the cam that's actually in the 427 build, it's actually a more mild intake duration and a standard exhaust duration. The duration for the intake is 235, the exhaust is 243. Now, that intake duration is less because it's an LS3 head. They flow great, you know, with less duration. That valve is just so big, you don't need to hang it open for such a long time anymore. So, 
with that camshaft, it's a pretty, pretty radical camshaft by most people's standards. But if I were to market that cam as a 427 Camaro Rick cam, I could label that as a stage one cam, you know, or stage three cam, whatever that is would just be whatever I name it as. So, you know, be advised that, you know, you can't just go off of the name of a camshaft in order to determine whether or not it is the right cam for your projects. So I hope you've been informed on this and I hope when you're making your cam shaft selection that you'll know exactly what to do. If this video helped you out, you know, definitely leave a like. And if you want to see more like this, don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned for some more. So I appreciate you guys watching. So I'll see you next time.